That was Pogreen FPS, and today we're going to compare some guns that I own to video game guns and how they function. Another video was pretty much kind of be a part two, would be military guns that I've used and trained with compared to video game guns. So check out for that video as well. Um, it should pop up in the corner here or there, wherever it pops up. Click it, check it out after you watch this video because uh, some pretty cool stuff that I'm using comparing both of them to real life and how it functions in the video game. And yes, there are big differences with the military grade firearms in there. So check that out as well. And I'm gonna pick up my SKS first. We're gonna talk about the SKS. Now this is not your typical SKS. This is a SG Works bullpup design, but let's get back to the video and what we would need to talk about. So, with the SKS in game and out of game, in game it has like a side mount and it has a Tapco aftermarket stock as well as a Tapco magazine. This one's got the Tapco magazine as well, but you know, it's a bullpup. So I'll let you guys check it out, but I'll talk while you guys are checking this out. So with the SKS, now comparing the SKS in real life to the one in the game, so the accuracy of this is good, but sometimes they really push it in the game. So that's the major difference. Not saying the 762 by 39 is not capable, but they really push the limits of the bullet. Um, I'd say probably 300-400 yards, maybe 500 yards. This 500 yards is pushing it, but I'd say maximum probably 400 yards with an SKS is good, just because the round is very limiting. Um, it is a medium round, medium range round. The SKS compared to in game and out of game, the accuracy is a little bit better in the game. The reliability in real life is awesome. It's a simple rifle. And another thing with the real life, when you rack the bolt back and then you let this go and it slams forward, it actually will make the free floating firearm pin sometimes hit the primer, igniting the primer and setting the round off. So that's a big, big, uh, crazy little safety issue that they still got in SKS. Some people have made springs for them so you can make it a spring loaded firing pin which will eliminate the gravity from making the firing pin slam when you rack the charging handle and slam the bolt forward. So that's comparing them to real life and um, game. I would have to say that the game has the upper hand on this one. In game SKS with Battlefield is a lot better than the ones in real life. Now this is a pistol, this looks like a 1911, but I'm going to bring it closer up so you guys can see it. You guys aren't going to see my face while I'm talking in this one because it's a pistol. But this is the TTC Talkeroff and this is used in the video game World at War. Now with this there are some issues that I have with this pistol. Um, in game it shoots really great, it shoots nice, and it does shoot decent. Um, it shoots decent I'm going to say, it shoots pretty good. Um, but the thing that makes it shoot kind of decent is the sights because the sights ain't as quick an acquisition as in the uh, In the game now I whited these sights out Put a little white U and then I got a little white dot up front But these sights are not that visible and compared to in, ga in game. They're a lot better in game It seems more like a 1911 in game But it is accurate and another thing that I hate about it is that look at that size I always pinch myself loading magazines in this thing and it's very small, very thin framed, very thin pistol overall. And compared to in game, it's a lot better in game. I love it in game, it's a lot of punch to it. And the bullet that it shoots is actually smaller diameter than a 9mm. But what makes it such an awesome round, 762 by 25, is it shoots so straight. But we're not reviewing it, I just thought I'd throw that in out there because it's a very straight shooting, very accurate round. Um, and its reliability is um, so so. The magazines kind of suck, so it does jam up once in a while. But uh, if you get a good magazine, like I have one magazine that runs really well, and the rest of the magazine just kind of run like crap, then you'll be good to go. But when you're in the military, you don't get to pick and prod your magazines. Especially the Russians, when they had these, they barely had enough rifles for their army. So yeah, if you got one of these, you're probably lucky. You're probably an officer or staff NCO or something. But I really don't know about that whole mess. But anyway, compare it to in-game and out-of-game. The Takarov much better in game due to the reasons why you don't get all the other like uncomfortable things pinching in your hand in here, it's being too small, the sights, you know, a lot better in game than out of game. So I'd have to give the win for the video game. The video now this is for the 1911. 
Now for the 1911, this one's highly modified. This is Project Can Cannon. And comparing it to in-game, there's tons of different games that have this. Just like most of these firearms are very popular. But I'm going to just talk about um, Battlefield and Call of Duty. So in Call of Duty and Battlefield, they both do not pack a big punch for our health damage. But with this thing, like I said, it's Project Can Cannon. This thing shoots a 45 ACP round and it's a very heavy round. Yes, it shoots slow, way slower than 9mm, but it's a devastating round and definitely has a lot of power and a lot of weight behind it. So uh, the video games kind of discredit that. In real life, this pistol is accurate just like in the game. Uh, in the game, they do a good job of, of, with accuracy with this. Um, the sights, I have used the military sights. They're about the same. They're not too bad. They're somewhat visible, just like in the game. Um, and also with this, I believe that out of game, it's a lot better because it puts, you know, it has that, that power. That, uh, well, I wouldn't say knockdown power because there is no such thing really as knockdown power. Like it's going to fly me backwards and knock me down. It's just a really hard hitting round, heavy round, and they need to implement higher health damage inside the games for the 1911. So if they put more health damage on the 1911 in the game, it would just be hand in hand. But I'm gonna have to give the real world 1911 the thumbs up. So I would have to say the real world version of 1911 wins over the game. It's a much better pistol than what they uh, put in, in the games. So all right, now we're work, working our way over to the AK-47. This is actually AMD 65, but I got my AK-47 locked up, actually technically AKM. But the AK-47 in-game compared to out-of-game. Now, I believe that they're pretty much even. The sights in game are really crude as well as in real life. I don't personally like leaf sights. I think it's just one of my pet peeves, but I don't like them as much. Same thing with in game, the night, the, the uh, sights, and for the game I'm talking about is Battlefield, the sights aren't as good, but it's kind of the same. So that that's good that they actually are staying true to the true firearm and not upgrading them like with the ghost aperture sights and stuff like that. So. Um, in game, that, that's about the same. I'm gonna have to go with a tie. Because in game, the health points that this takes is great. They take a good amount of damage and it's a very well evened out rifle. And I believe they did a really good job at designing the AK-47 and how it functioned in the game. I believe they're about even. They did a very good job with the AK-47 and they better because it's the most used rifle in the world, most highly manufactured rifle in the world, they're everywhere. So good job on you guys for actually doing what you're supposed to do with this in Call of Duty. All right, this is my pride and joy of classic rifles. Now, this is just an extra I added on there. But everything else is original except the sling. But the Arasaka, you'll see these used in World at War, used by the Japanese. Now the Arasaka is an awesome rifle. I love the apertures and World at War did a good job at really capturing the sights and how everything worked. Um, both sights are tied. They're, they're exactly like they're supposed to be, relate to real life, very good. The accuracy of these rifles are very good. and. Everything they captured in the game is the same as this. Like it's amazing that they put that much detail into Arasaka, especially knowing that Arasaka rifles were captured and they were not massively produced. They were not sent into the US, imported into the US uh, for financial gain. They were captured from actual Japanese soldiers, sailors, or armed servicemen, wh whoever it may be, they, they actually had to capture these. So this is a captured Arasaka from World War II. This is a piece of history. And I love this rifle, and that's why I love it. But I'm gonna have to give these guys, who's better, real life or video game? <coughs> Excuse me. 
<clears throat> I'm gonna have to go with the thing is it's it's almost even who wins the video game or real life I would have to say real life most definitely and the reason why is because this round is pretty much equivalent to our 30-06 uses a 311 diameter bullet, not a 308 bullet, a little bit bigger bullet, and it packs similar ballistics to a 30-06 round. So can you imagine getting hit with a big 30-06, and then you shoot like once or twice with this in the game, and then they're dead? You guys need to up the damage on the Arasaka in the game. So real life, Arasaka wins on this one. All right, so now you see me with no gun. Now you see me with a gun. The M9 Beretta, we'll get a close up for this one as well. The M9 Beretta compared to out of the game and in game. I own this one, this is as close as you can get. This is M9 commercial, uh, swapped with metal parts, so on and so forth. But this is pretty much the service model. But I also trained with this in the military as well. And I got additional training, extra training on the M9. So I know this pistol pretty great greatly and I have gunsmithed on this and changed shit around, took it all apart, put it back together just for shits and giggles. Um, M9 is very, very well precision, well tuned pistol and its accuracy is great in game. Uh, the recoil is great in game. The recoil is good in real life. It's because it's so heavy though and you know it's a metal frame pistol, metal frame obviously upper slide and everything, all metal construction so it's a little bit heavy. But comparing it to in game and out of game, it shoots accurately, which is very true about this. This is a very good pistol. This is one of my top three pistols that I really like. It used to be my number one, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. Kind of going on a rant. But the M9 pistol compared to real life and in game. Now, the sights are the same in game, um, most of the games, but they do kind of leave something out. With the M9 for the military, it's like this. They got the single dot in the rear, one dot in the front. People usually aren't used to that. But comparing that to in-game and out-of-game, they usually have two or three dot sights. I'm not going to hold that against them, but you guys could fix that. Put the put the post and dot sight, and that's the true M9. So uh, I kind of be an anal with it, but you know what? Let's just set that aside that they get the sights kind of wrong, and I'm just going to go over the overall performance. I'm going to have to say it is a tie. You guys did a great job on this. The accuracy, um, and the recoil and the, the way it feels is very similar to the way that it fires in real life. So great job for this. And the game I am talking about is Call of Duty. You guys did a very good job with the M9 pistol. All right, now if you don't got one of these, everybody should have one of these. A Mosin Nagat, at least when they're still affordable. So we'll take a look at this. The Mosin Nagat in game, we're gonna use World of War, Call of Duty. Now, Call of Duty, they made this rifle you know, this is an accurate rifle, but the way this was designed and mass produced was for the called the belt buckle shot. So when you're aiming down the sight and you're aiming here, you aim at the enemy's belt buckle. So the tip of the front sight post would be pretty much aimed right above his nutsack. You aim at the belt buckle right there. And when you're aiming at the belt buckle, it actually hit around the center of the chest. And that's the way these things were sighted in, was for that, so it was quicker acquisition. I don't know why they don't, don't do point on target. They just had to be difficult. But compared to end game and out of game, I actually like the end game a lot better. Uh, it's more accurate, a lot better. But you know what? Friggin', I'm gonna have to give it to the one that's end game. The reason why is due to that reason is the iron sights. Now, this rifle is accurate. I hit pull size with this thing, and I ain't shitting you. This is a very accurate rifle, especially with custom hand loads. I got a special little recipe for each of my rifles, and they all shoot differently. So th this is my M44, but I got 9130s as well, and yeah. So I would have to give it to the end game due to the sights actually being point of impact. I really All right, now please don't criticize me for this. I got a CZ P09, but we're going to be talking about the CZ75. Now, I have shot the CZ75, and this is why I bought my CZ P09. It's very, very similar. And it's pretty much the same pistol except it's polymer lower. Now, with the CZ P09 compared to in game and out of game, in game, it just seems like the pistols are really small, and that really bothers me. 
I really don't like that. I really don't like it in game because it's not giving the true aspect of the CZ75. It's not giving you the full feel of it. And the reason why I mean by that is due to the size, due to how like, I don't know, it's just one of those things It's not very similar to the real life. And I think it shoots a lot better. I think it's, it, they're not giving it enough credit. So I think it shoots a lot better in real life. So this one is gonna have to go to the real life CZ75. And now we're going over to my M4 clone. Now, with this, this is my favorite rifle. Um, in game, out of game, which one's better? I believe that it depends on the game with this one. Most of the games are pretty much similar, they do similar things. But in the Call of Duty game, I think it works pretty damn good. And it's definitely good in full auto mode when you're doing controlled bursts. I think it gets the edge on that. But if it was like the Battlefield version and not the Call of Duty version, I would have to say that this one would win in the Battlefield ver version. This one would win overall, the real life one. But in the Call of Duty version, the Call of Duty version one is way better than it is in real life. Um, you know, the full auto mode and everything is very controllable, very easy. So the video game would win in that one. But with the Battlefield version, um, it wouldn't win because due to the HP damage is not as great compared to real life. So I would have to say real life would win in that aspect. So since um, I'm basing these mainly off um, Call of Duty and Battlefield, that I would have to say that we'd have to call this one a draw due to that reason. All right, now we're going to the M16A4 version. This is a mid-length, this is the closest thing I got to M16A4. But with the M16A4, it's more set up as a, you know, kind of a longer range. It kind of has that marksmanship aspect of it. And M4 is more close quarters kind of kind of feel to it. But compared to in-game and out-of-game, the three-round burst uh, in Battlefield, it feels just the same. Uh, Semi-automatic, it needs more HP killing power. And the one compared to Call of Duty, same thing, it needs more HP killing power. So who wins the M16A4 in real life? Or video game? It would be real life. Real life wins this one. The real life M16A4 is much better than the one in the video game. All right, so this concludes my video. These are just my opinions on how they um, function. And I'm basing it off my experience. So these are what I really truly think about the video game guns and the real life guns. So thank you guys for watching. Remember to watch the uh, military uh, weapons as well that I've had issued to me and that I've trained with and that I've used in the military. That'll be a totally separate video and I'll explain what's better, the real life military version or the video game version. So thank you guys for watching and have a nice day.